Starting with the default scene, first make sure the object is facing the right way, which is to the front. Then enter edit mode, and from the tool shelf, click loop, cut and slide. Do this twice to place a loop front to back and left to right. As the loops need to be centered on the mesh, right click after selecting setting the orientation. Once done, add another loop dividing the back half of the mesh in two. Again, right click to ensure the cut is centered. Next, switch select mode to face and multi-select, that is shift while right clicking each face on the underside of the cube. Then left click drag the blue handle of the widget upwards to reduce the height, creating what will now be the seat of the chair. To create the back and rear legs, shift right click the two back faces of the seat and then click the extrude region button in the tool shelf and drag upwards. Left click to set once a suitable height has been reached. Similarly, select the two faces on the bottom, click extrude, drag down, then left click to set. With that done, add two more center loop cut on the left and right side of the mesh. Again, right click to center the cut. From the underside of the rear leg, select the center edge and left click drag the blue handle of the widget upwards a short distance. Select the edges to the left and right of the center. Switch the widget to scale, then left click drag the red handle one side, increasing the distance between the two elements. Next, select the edge pairs running along the front and back of the foot and then click the subdivide button in the tool shelf. Select the two edges just created and switching between the scale and transform widget, reposition them to create an arc. To create a peak at the top of the chair, select the two edges either side of the center line. Using the scale widget, increase their distance if needed and then select the center edge, grab the blue handle of the widget and drag upwards to create the peak. Release to confirm. For the front legs, they first need to be inset before then being extruded. So select the, the first pair of faces, then click the Inset Faces button in the tool shell and type 0 0.25. Press Enter to confirm. Repeat on the other side. Select Inset Faces, then type 0 0.25 before hitting Enter. This ensures both feet are identical. Then to create the actual legs, select the faces of the inset and then click Extrude Region, drag down and left click to set in place. Switch to Scale and with the bottom faces still selected, change their size so they're slightly larger than the top. Once that's done, the chair is essentially completed but it needs to be repositioned so it sits properly on the horizon. So toggle out of Perspective Mode and into Front View deselect and then reselect everything and click the blue handle of the widget and drag upwards until the bottom of the feet sit on the horizon. Check the position then toggle back into perspective mode to continue. At this point the mesh can be UV mapped but because of its awkward shape a number of edges can be strategically marked as seams in order to create a split in the UV map ensuring it lays out flat. So using shift right click, work around the mesh, so multi-select edges that will cause the map to split like a cardboard box. This process may be easier by first define sections, for example, separate the back of the chair from the seat, the front legs from the seat, mark seams around the top. This process incidentally often means aggressively throwing the scene around, making adjustments moving the objects to expose areas that need to be selected. Once specific sections of the mesh have been defined using seams, those areas themselves can be further split so that they individually unwrap as a flat UV. This can take some adjustment through trial and error, so at this point all that's being generated is an initial UV map which will be edited later on once an image has been assigned. For now, however, as much of the UV map can be laid out and split at this initial point to save too much re-editing later on.
Once the scenes for this first pass have been marked, the scene can be switched to wireframe mode to check overall seam placement due to edges marked as seams being highlighted a different colour from the default. Once everything checks out, the next step is to generate a texture and assign that to the UV map of the chair. Switch the interface to the UV editing layout using the Choose Screen Layout option and click the New button at the bottom of the UV image editor on the left. In the New Image dialog that appears, change the name, width, height and generate type before clicking OK to create an image. In this instance, a two-tone checker. 512 by 512 pixels, height, width. In the 3D view on the right, select the entire mesh in edit mode, switch to texture display mode, reselect the image in the UV image editor, and then from the mesh menu, select UV unwrap, unwrap. This generates an initial UV map superimposed over the previously generated image. As the checker image can sometimes make it difficult to see the UV map, the type can be changed to a flat color to make the UV map easier to see. In the image editor, switch the selection mode to Island and then make adjustments to each UV island so they are better aligned to the image. So make a selection, right click, press R to rotate, G translate and move around, left click to confirm. So that's right click to select, R to rotate, G to move and left click to confirm. Once the map has been organized, inspect the mesh in the 3D view and then return to the default layout, selecting that option from the Choose Screen Layout list. Switch the display mode if necessary to texture and inspect the mesh. Once everything checks out, switch to solid mode and expand the properties panel and then link the image to the material. First, Change the material's name. Alter the diffuse color. And then in texture properties, change the name. Change the type to image or movie. And then click the browse image to be linked button. Select the image previously generated and then change the coordinates to UV. Everything else can be left as is. Return the 3D view back to texture mode to view the texture and the completed chair. If the position of the scene lamp makes it difficult to assess the final result, right click select it and reposition it to better illuminate the object. It's likely doing this will reveal some UV map discrepancies, so go back into UV editing mode, select the mesh, and adjust the UV map to correct any errors or distortions. Inspect the mesh, and return back to the default screen layout. Although the basic chair is complete, from this point, using the same tools and simple techniques as before, the chair can be further modified and edited to give it a more interesting shape. For example, using scale to widen the back and increase the size of the peak, and loop cut to change the profile of the chair's back. Changes made after the fact, especially if the object has already been UV mapped, will mean re-editing the UV map to correct any distortions presented by editing the mesh. So switch back to UV editing layout, make the corrections, and then return back to the default view with the object completed.